What is going on guys? I hope you all had an awesome Thanksgiving. I hope you guys got to go home, see your family, eat lots of food, watch some football, all that stuff. So I myself got to, I had an awesome time. Um, headed back to Madison though, it's time to get back to work. So, all right, so I got a really good response from my last Car Thoughts video. Um, just doing a vlog kind of talking. And I figured today would be the perfect day to talk some science with you. So I was thinking of making a video where I'm just kind of talking about like the biochemistry of like insulin and glucagon and how cell signaling works and that sort of thing. And how you can optimize that for fat loss. Um, quick side note, I actually wrote an article on some of the most important hormones for fat loss. It's both on the BioFit Athletics site, biofit-athletics.com or biofitlabsofficial.com. So you can go to either one, it's gonna direct you to the same site. But anyway, it's also published on MyProtein. So you guys can also head to myprotein.com and check that out. But it, or I don't know if it's uploaded yet, actually. It may or may not be uploaded yet. It sometimes takes them about a week. Um, but it is for sure on our site. So if you wanna check that out, head to biofitlabsofficial.com, go to the articles, and you can find it there. Anyway, let's talk a little bit of science. So, like I said, I wanna talk about insulin and glucagon and how they are um, regulated in the body. Whether you have a very small amount of knowledge about biochemistry or physiology, or whatever you wanna coin um, this category, or a lot, of, maybe you know a lot about it, um, you will gain something from this video. If you really break these reactions down, there's a very, very long and complex process sequence of events that occur. Uh, I'm going to kind of shorten it and make it a little more brief and simple so that you don't have to get confused and like caught up in all the um, biochemical garbage. Basically I just want to explain enough so that you can understand it even if you don't have a very um, deep knowledge of biochemistry. So because I, I definitely don't like I'm in biochem this semester and I've learned a lot about this signaling and stuff but I wouldn't say by any means that I have a very in-depth knowledge of like endocrine biochem but so I guess the first place I can start with this would be to say that insulin and glucagon you could consider them to be seesaw hormones and the fact that when insulin is high glucagon is low and when glucagon is high insulin is low and they're released as a result of the amount of sugar present in your blood okay so when you have high blood sugar you're going to have high amounts of insulin being secreted from the pancreas and when you have low blood sugar then you're gonna have high amounts of glucagon being secreted from the pancreas. And there are very specific reasons why these hormones are secreted as a result of um, your blood glucose levels. So let's start with insulin. So like I said, when blood sugar is high, insulin is high. And the reason for this is because in the pancreas, you have this thing called, it's a transporter, it's called the GLUT2 transporter, okay? This is the uptake transporter for pancreatic beta cells, meaning that glucose is shuttled into the pancreatic beta cells through this transporter, okay? So now, a bunch of glucose is present in the blood. That means a lot's gonna be shuttled into the pancreatic cells through this transporter. Okay, so now think about this. As you have all this glucose getting pumped in, pumped in more and more, then the cell is gonna to start to metabolize that, okay? It's gonna oxidize that glucose and it's gonna make a lot of energy. It's gonna make a lot of ATP. In the meantime, you also have this channel. It's called an ATP-gated potassium channel. And what it does is it just keeps the membrane at a certain differential. It keeps it in a hyperpolarized state, meaning it has a very negative potential, okay? Um, you don't need to understand that that much, I'm just kind of giving you some background. Okay, so these two events are happening at the same time. ATP levels are rising because of the glucose being pumped in from the GLUT2. And at the same time, you also have your ATP-gated channel. And basically this channel is just keeping a membrane potential, okay? So the next step is that all this ATP that's being generated from the cell it's going to bind to that potassium channel and it's gonna close it. When you close this channel, that's gonna mitigate this, uh, this membrane differential. And by mitigate, I mean it's gonna go from a hyperpolarized state to not much charge at all. So it's gonna to start to depolarize. And as this cell starts to depolarize, you have this huge influx of calcium then. I know there's a lot to keep track of in your head, but just bear with me. So, first step, ATP levels rise. Second step, the ATP-gated potassium channels close, and this starts to depolarize the cell. As the cell continues to depolarize, now calcium is gonna start coming in. At that point, there's enough calcium to depolarize the cell completely, and when the cell depolarizes, it causes insulin to be secreted from the cell, okay? So during this entire time, insulin is just being stored in these little vesicles in the cell. And as soon as the cell depolarizes, then all that insulin is released from those vesicles into the bloodstream. 
Does it make sense so far? I know that was a lot to throw at you. Um, hopefully you made sense. And if you have any other questions, you guys can feel free to comment on the video. So now that insulin is circulating freely through the body, basically it's going to bind to all these different types of cells like fat and muscle cells. And when it does that, it actually increases the amount of transport of something called GLUT4 transporter, okay? Okay, so GLUT2 is for the pancreas cells. GLUT4 is for pretty much all the other cells of the body. And GLUT4 is also the uptake transporter. It's just not the same as GLUT2 because it's not in the pancreas. So insulin binds to something called a receptor tyrosine kinase. So basically what kinases do in the body is they move around phosphate groups and they either activate or inactivate certain enzymes and proteins and things of that sort. So once insulin binds to the cell, it causes this thing called a phosphorylation cascade where it's just a bunch of different phosphorylation um, reactions where you're just moving phosphate groups down into the cell further and further. One other little side note I forgot to mention is that GLUT4 transporters, they're not naturally on the cell membrane, okay? They're actually stored intracellularly. So when insulin binds to that receptor tyrosine kinase that I was mentioning, it's actually gonna cause that phosphorylation cascade and it's gonna cause increased transport of those GLUT4 transporters up to the cell membrane. So now those can be used for the uptake of glucose into the cell. Before that though, when you don't have GLUT4 present um, on the cell membrane, then you can't transport glucose in, or at least not as much, because um, obviously you're gonna have some GLUT4 uh, expressed on the cell membranes, but until you have that insulin binding, that's when you really have all that GLUT4 shuttled to the cell membrane. Okay, so now let's just talk about this big picture. Um, I'm not gonna talk too much about glucagon just because I'm basically just gonna tell you it's, it does kind of the opposite. Um, it doesn't use the exact same mechanisms and it has different receptors, different types of receptors, but um, the overall goal of glucagon release is going to be just an opposite. Okay, so big picture stuff. So this only applies to people that are not diabetic. Um, things are very different with diabetics, so I'm gonna to stick to just normal uh, people that don't have diabetes. So in a fed state, when your blood glucose levels are high, insulin is gonna be high as well. And what insulin is gonna do is it's gonna lower your blood sugar by shuttling all of that sugar into the cells. So glucagon, on the other hand, is secreted when you're in a fasted state um, or when your blood glucose levels are genuinely low. And what glucagon does is it does the exact opposite. And so glucagon works a little differently. It doesn't actually transport, you know, it doesn't do anything with the GLUT4 transporters. But what glucagon actually does is it causes the release of muscle glycogen and liver glycogen back into the bloodstream. And in doing so, it increases your blood glucose levels. Glucagon also stimulates gluconeogenesis through different, a uh, few different pathways. Gluconeogenesis is basically the creation of a glucose molecule from different substrates, something like amino acids from muscle or from dietary amino acids. And those are just amino acids that are called glucogenic. Gluconeogenesis can also use fat um, to create glucose. So in a way, that's the reason that you still have energy even when you're cutting. Um, or dieting down, I guess. Not necessarily cutting, because it depends on your goals. And keep in mind, this is all under the assumption that you're already in a caloric deficit if you um, are trying to lose fat. And if you are, you're generally gonna have lower insulin levels, higher glucagon levels, and glucagon is gonna be breaking down all these tissues and uh, dietary substrates for glucose. It's either gonna be in the form of glucose already, or it's gonna be converted into glucose to keep your blood sugar levels in a healthy range, as well as to provide enough energy for your brain. Because keep in mind, your brain can only use glucose for energy. It can't use any other um, substrates. And a little fun fact, I just learned this actually not too long ago. The brain uses 120 grams of glucose a day. And if you think about it, and you weigh out 120 grams of you know white powder, and I hope you've never done that. That's a lot of glucose. I don't remember what I was saying. All right, so let's just summarize. So insulin is an anabolic hormone. That means that it promotes the growth of tissues, and this includes both muscle and fat. So insulin stimulates protein synthesis, but it also stimulates lipogenesis, meaning the creation of fat. So glucagon, on the other hand, that's a catabolic hormone, so that breaks down tissues. That can break down muscle for energy because it can convert that into glucose, and then that can be used for the brain or for other um, other parts of the body. And it can just be released generally when blood glucose levels are low. And in doing so, it raises those glucose levels back up to a healthy range. So when your blood glucose is not within a healthy range, um, that puts you really at risk for a lot of things like diabetes or um, a lot of other things 
especially with actually low, very low blood glucose levels, because that can lead to seizures, comas, death even, uh, and in a very short amount of time, I don't remember the actual numbers, but I think it was like 10 minutes without blood, or without any glucose to your brain is gonna, would kill you. I think it's something like that. I could be, I could be off, but something like that. Uh, either way, you, you need your blood glucose levels in a very healthy range. It's very important for just functioning properly, but also just maintaining homeostasis within the body. Okay, I feel like I just talked for a really long time and I know it was a lot of big words and a lot of confusing topics. I'm trying to keep it as simple, but still informative to the point where you can start to build some knowledge with the actual biochemistry of how your body works and how you can manipulate nutritional science to you know, further optimize your goals, whether that be for fat loss, muscle growth, performance, um, anything like that. So now that you hopefully understand what I'm kind of trying to lay out for you guys, so now I can put up another video where I can actually teach you how to use this knowledge that you've learned in order to help improve your goals or just your overall health 